guys, I can't tell you. I am in Brooklyn. I'm in Bushwick where all this graffiti is and everything. I just got off the subway line and I am going to see Sarah Oliphant. We're going to Oliphant Studios today and we're going to talk to her. We're going to interview her. We're going to talk about the how she does her thing with the backdrops. I had a goal as a photographer. I always want, dreamt of having one of her backdrops. And finally, when I, I got a big job in, I was like, I'm going to go get one. And I was so psyched. I got this big 12 by 20 and I went to meet her and I didn't know what she was like or anything and she's the sweetest, most incredible woman and I just love her. She's just amazing to work with and uh, you're going to see. Why, do, why am I telling you? Come on, let's go. Let's go check it out. I say elephant. 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 I'm Sarah Elephant. Sarah Elephant. Sarah, they said down south. Sarah. 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 Elephant. Now I'm a Yankee, so I say I'm, I say Sarah Oliphant. Sarah Oliphant. Because, yeah. I had this question because I always was like, am I saying it right? Am oh, I saying it right? Am I don't I care right? how you say it. You know, it's not weird how people care, but who cares? No. I, I don't fine. care. I don't even care if you call me by the wrong name. If I if I know it's directed to me and you call me Susan, it doesn't matter to It'll me. You're right. That doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, so I guys, I, I I am here with Sarah Oliphant in her studio and I would consider her the the premier backdrop painter in the world um by bar none mm, I'm, there are other people that do beautiful backdrops yeah, but, but none of them do the, as many she's like this and is don't listen to any of it mm -hmm. um I've been fortunate enough to have uh come to gone to her a few years ago and I've been, I had been waiting. I had always dreamed of having one of her backdrops. And finally, I had the, the money to do it. And I got excited. And we met. And we've been friends ever since. And she's just an amazing person. I didn't know that I was getting that as a bonus. So you get a great backdrop. And you get a great person to go along with it. We have good dogs. Oh, did you know Buddy died? Our chihuahua. I know. I it think was so I sad. Saw, yeah. I, I did. Uh, our yeah, our studio is nice because we have dogs. We used to have dogs. Now we have a dog. But we like when people bring their children and their old relatives. I like a mixed studio, you know. Bad dogs, bad children. I'll take bad two and a half year olds. I don't care. They can they can have temper tantrums. I'm gonna have to come back with I the like kids. It. I, I like it. I like it. That's the best thing about our studio is that we can we have all kinds of people here and animals and So what is going on over there? That's that's a that's that's a that's a I've got my fingers crossed with that drop. That's a drop I'm it's, a bur it's on burlap, and uh, I'm trying to copy for a photographer who is trying to copy a drop that I've already painted. I have no idea, no memory of how I painted it the first time. Oh and, my uh, gosh. So it's, this is a first coat with burlap. But burlap is really beautiful. Have you seen, have you ever shot on it? Let me show you. I don't think it's, so. Uh, Unless, I, I, love that, I love the way burlap shoots. It's, um, it's like, so this drop, this is the first coat. It won't stay splotchy like this. And I don't even know if it's, how it's gonna be when it dries. So Jamie's, no, oh, it's still soaking wet, good, because it's too dark. So Jamie's, you wet, you wanna wet it, keep oh, wetting that's it, burlap. so this that's is burlap, yeah. Wow. Here, let's just, let me show you over here. So this is, uh, this is the drop that this photographer liked, but like I said, I have no memory of how I did it. So now we're just trying to, I, with burlap you do have to get, you have to get, uh, sometimes it takes numerous coats because it just, the fibers just suck it up. I have done burlap where I gessoed it or like primed it and then painted completely on it. So if you're doing something dark, you would have to, are brightly colored, you would have to put a white base on first because uh, yeah. the, the warmth of the burlap always wants to come through. But it's really, see how beautiful? Like you, yeah. you see what I'm saying? It does some weird, almost like pixelates a little bit. Yeah. I, and yeah. it's very matte, very flat. Yeah, it is nice. The only thing about burlap is you have to shoot it against a wall or put something behind it or you, you this happens. See, yeah, exactly. So, I see that. you know. Uh, but you can just get a piece of velour or something to put behind it. So that, they want, this photographer wanted something like this, but darker. So I'm getting, 
and I'm getting an initial texture in, and then I'll probably just do an overall coat bigger. So it's like the, you want to get your texture, but you don't want to have it be uh, too painterly. I don't know. We'll, we'll, tomorrow we'll tell when it dries how light it gets. Right. And then what else is happening here? This is like this is for a showroom. And this is also, this you can actually do yourself too. This is a, just a drop, an old drop cloth. Like you can go into your grandparents' garage, find his find old something like that, and drop cloth, it. and then stain it or something, you know? So this, this, and it gives a beautiful sort of vintage. I also like painting on drop cloth material because it's uh, coarser. Mm -hmm. And, um, but most of our drops are painted on 12 ounce canvas and um, and we prime them and then paint either the front or the back. What's the most popular size? I would that say you do? it depends on what you're doing. If you're like a if you're a portrait photographer and that's all you're doing and you want to travel, an ideal drop like a six by eight is really small. But if you you can put it in a snowboard bag, you can travel internationally with it. Nobody ever says a word. You can take it anywhere. Uh, it's six by eight seems really, or six by ten. The length doesn't matter. It's just the width because you can right. get you can any. It has to do with how you roll it. So you could do a six by twelve, a six by eighteen. Doesn't that's the length doesn't matter, but the six six seems small to me. Like if you were really shooting, like when you do you, you shoot on a four foot. I have a four foot because I shoot a lot of headshots. So I, I know, you but how can me you? That means you're eight. right beside them. Are you sure it's four? Yeah. And not six? No, it's four because it fits in my bag that was four. I mean, had you design it so it fit in this bag that's four feet wide. No, I don't want any vignette because I can do that in post or I can do it, you know, with light because I need that vignette because it gives me a little hook when I'm painting. You know, it's oh, like yeah. a little bit of, like, by hook, I mean, um, you have to feel like when you paint the backdrop that it's, that you're, like, doing, that it's, it's its own entity, that you're not just doing... You know, this two feet, the same as this two feet. It's like, whatever your edges are, that's the whole thing. Right. And if I don't give any vignette, I don't. I feel like I can't Doesn't quite have depth or something. can't quite yeah. get into it. Even yeah. if I do it so subtle that only you and I know it's there, I need it psychologically. Uh, wow. It makes it more fun. I don't know how to describe. I love it, it that you did that. But on I think both a six by eight dresses. seems a little small. Uh, like if if you were going to be in your studio, I'd say eight by ten, ten by twelve. Yeah. But then. If more, like, and I, I, you know, because we have so many drops in rental stock, the average size is a 12 by 24, because then you've got a classic sweep. Wow. So if you're going to yeah. use a sweep in the, I found that it's like you just multiply your width. So if it's a, if it's a 10 foot drop, you do it 20 long. If it's 12, you do it 24. Oh. Then you, because then you did then, a 12 by 20 for me. Maybe it's 24. It might have been a 20. I mean, 12 by 20 works too, you know, if you, can, yeah. but, but then if you really want to pull back, you, you know, you 12 by 20 is, is, is fine. It's rare that that would be yeah. a problem. But if you're going to stay in your studio, then I, I would say a six by eight seems small. But, yeah. You know, unless yeah. you like shooting off, like I love that look where, you know, Leibowitz does it all the time. Yeah, where the where thing's shoots, off the ground yeah, and she well, shoots yeah, she around just, it yeah, and you shoot she, half of it. Whatever, I love that exactly. Too. Yeah, that's yeah what, so that's, then you're fine. I love. Yeah. And I always give, unless you ask me to clean cut it, I'm going to give you, nat we call them natural edges. It's the slight yeah. scalloping of the, is this, so that you, you can, when you pull back, you can see that yeah, it's, it's nice. a backdrop. What are, yeah. I don't even know what these are. These are, okay, so I'll show you. This is a double-sided one, Darren. Is this a double-sided? Why did I do this? That looks the same. So what are the ways that people, like, they come to you and they say, I want to drop. How do you get All right, so what we'll do, I'll show you exactly. Here's, sit here, I'll show you. This is, this is like my really fancy office. All right, okay. so they, they call me. Yeah. Uh, let's just say this person, for instance. She, she was actually here. So... Uh, someone would, somebody will call me, well, you know, I'll have, they'll want a backdrop. Right. And so, uh, but they live in wherever this is. This is London. not even in, oh, in London, okay. She was very nice, this woman, Olga. Um, and 
So, so she, she saw this. She sent she me this. Felix. Yeah, Felix yeah. shot this, and this was just a little drop we had. We have in stock, and look at so you. She, I know. It's like it's tragic. Um, Stop. Whatever. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Um, so. All right. So then I have to talk. So I have to talk. I talked to her on the phone, and so we go through it. That's very similar to the one that I. Yeah, it's you very did for similar, me. except this one's more aged. Yeah. That's yeah, the yeah, difference. Yeah. So she told me the size. Uh, just she wanted just under six feet, so there'd be no problem with putting it in a bag, snowboard mm -hmm. bag. So I think we did it five eleven finally, and uh, so then we talk about it. I say, okay, uh, you want it gray and. She wants a warm gray, you know, brownish. So a lot of this, because we're talking on the phone, even though we're both looking at on our monitors of what her reference is, you know, it's all relative. You know, right. what I think of as gray or sepia or what it's, you know, your brown's not necessarily my brown. Right. And so we, I try to talk about it in ways that are uh, not, I'm not a photographer, so I can't, I, you know, when I have a photographer who tries to talk to me like a photographer, I'm like way out of my depth because I don't, I don't understand that stuff. Right. So I have to talk about it literally in a kind of primitive way. You know, like if you're glancing at the drop, if somebody's walking through and glancing at it, would they say that's a gray drop or would they say that's a brown drop? So this woman right. said, oh, I want it to read gray. I want it, I want you to think of it as a gray drop, but it's still brownish. So see, I, can, I understand what that means. And that's generally a pretty good way to, com to communicate that. So it's not gonna be brown, but it's gonna be quite warm. And then we talk about value. That's always very, uh, that's always a very important, like, do you, you know, so that if 10 is black and one is white, what's your value? Is your range like four, five, six, oh. five, six, seven? That's also kind of, uh, you know, that's, that's a clear way to, and like I said, it's really primitive, like you would do in middle school, but it's clear, you know. And then, then we have to talk about texture, you know, like I can see, if, they, if you send me the picture, then I can see the texture. Right. But I'm, I'm never gonna reproduce this exactly, even if I'm trying, I have the backdrop up here, even if it doesn't matter how hard I try, each one will be individual. Right. Otherwise, I'm not, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. Just, you just have to have somebody print them on a, in a factory or something because it's, uh, yeah. it's, yeah. it's a back paint. And now if I were going to give her a double-sided, I would have, I'd paint this side. So you paint the, I would have painted that side first. So you paint the gessoed side first and then I paint the other side. So this is, this is this client's drop. And like I said, I had to just, normally I don't often pre-age them, but she wanted it to feel very sort of aged. Wow, that's beautiful. That, it is this pretty. Is, this yeah. is very similar to the one you made for me. Except yours wasn't, you've aged, you may have aged it yourself. <laughs> no, it's not as aged as this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is, uh, this will eventually happen to, you know, over, over time, because the back of the drop, what's nice about it is that it naturally, it naturally, you feel us, you know, like we've sanded that, but it will sand down almost to glass. Your drop will mm -hmm. do that too, because it just gets used so that they're, you don't lose your color because it's embedded in the, uh -huh. but it just gets, you lose the that fluff like of the fiber. The, Brent, this looks like one. Yeah. So I like do just I like um, I like shooting the big drop with this drop in front of it, and then I have some depth and I put the yeah. person on this one. But I got the big one right behind it, and they they like they're very too. close. I love that. Yeah. So that's why I wanted one that I could do that with. That's different and lighter. Yeah. In tone, I Wait, think. so you want, that's what you want, is a lighter I one? I want a lighter one, I think, because yeah. the, then I don't have to light it. I can let it fall off and get darker on its own, but I don't know what. Well, let's, let's, um, let's, let, let's make some notes. Where's my, I need to put a different tube on this thing. I, I, what I want to get at is for the photographers out there that, that are going to be watching this, like when they come to you like how let's say that they don't know what they want 
Okay, then like generally, you... I mean, I'm, as you know, I'm a talker. You know? I, I, I'll talk to anybody any length of time, but I'll know every, I'll know about your aunt and yeah. <laughs> whatever. You know, I won't necessarily talk about backdrops, but I can, I can certainly, like I've, I've, I've recommended backdrops. Like I've said, oh, yeah. because also a lot of people have really sacrificed for, for their drops. They are, you know, I mean, really sacrifice. They, it's a big investment, and I, I feel a big responsibility for that. So I, I really do generally want people to get more bang for their buck. So if, if you, unless you have something very specific, if you're trying to break into the market or just increase your market for what you're doing, I often say, you know, a classic, you know, a classic gray, you know. Yeah. A, a medium value, uh, medium organic texture, not, not, not stupid looking like a Kmart drop, but you know, subtle but classic. And then if you're going to do a double sided, do a warm gray on one side, and then on the other side, go cool. You know, go or neutral. Go go darker, lighter, just so you get more. Mm -hmm. But I think most people when they, they've They've, they've, they know what they want. They've seen a drop that they want, or they have been following a photographer that they realize has good taste. Good taste, and uh, does good work. And so they can also look through through you know our website. Your they website can see, has a ton. Well, they can just see know, good examples give of, an idea, yeah. because the truth is, a good photographer can take a shitty looking backdrop and make it look good. Yeah. A really beautiful backdrop will make it easier to make a nice photograph, but it's not a guarantee. Yeah. You know, you still gotta, you still gotta know what you're, you know, what you're doing. Yeah. And just because you have an iPhone doesn't make you a photographer, sadly. Otherwise, I would be able to do it. The here is amazing. I think the thing that you, that you also, that I think is important is that it's an, it's an investment, but it's also can pay itself back. Like you always oh, told me, you got to charge for these things. Exactly. You know? That's a, that's the main thing. And I can't, I can't stress that enough people, uh, is that it doesn't even matter. Like, if, like if you were shooting, say you're shooting a friend's headshot, uh, and you, you know, and you had to get a special piece of equipment, you would say, okay, you're going to have to pay me a little bit extra or whatever. Even if you just charge $25, you're gonna, it will pay for itself. And every time you, every time you shoot a job, I mean, granted, every market is different. There's a different level, but you know, we we have 2,000 rental drops. So when you call us, we tell you, you know, it's an editorial. It's based on usage as opposed to the individual drop. So it's, if it's editorial, it's mm -hmm. run price, advertising, TV. Mm -hmm. You could literally, if you're shooting it for a commercial client. Charge them what we charge for a rental. You'll pay for your drop after three uses. Um, yeah, you have to charge them. You have to, you really do. Everybody does that. Every photographer I know who has a backdrop, big photographers, they, they charge the client for the use of the backdrop. And I'm happy for them to do that because then they can get other drops, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and also, hopefully, they'll, I'll do a beautiful enough drop so that. It's a it's a in investment too. You know, if you want to sell it, you can sell it. When I painted backdrop, now I've started to sign them only because I want people to. You know, then it's can you say. I love okay, that you sign mine. Well, Are you kidding me? I'm not, like, I don't really I think of it. it like art, but I want I want people to because I've had people bring drops over and say, oh, like you, you painted you this blah too. blah blah. I didn't paint that. <laughs> you know, I can yeah. see. I know what I. You know, even if I painted it 30 years ago, I know I didn't. You know, yeah. I can tell and. Uh, so, what this about way. you? How'd you get? Did you? Uh, were you in art school or were you an artist? Yeah, like, what was? Uh, I, I've always been. Uh, I've always been an artist. It was like sad to me when I was little because I have this like, uh, my special talent is like hand eye coordination. So even from when I was little, I could copy. That doesn't really make you an artist, but it makes you a good scenic artist. And um, so and because I'm so classically attention deficit that. Instead of being, you know, identified in the 50s in South Carolina as like stupid, lazy idiot, I was like my mother would say, "Oh, Sarah can't clean a room up. She's an artist." You know, Sarah can't 
you know, do her math homework. She's an artist, and um, so that that's that saved my ass. Let me tell wow. you. Wow. <laughs> and and then I was just started taking art lessons. A friend of the family, uh, her husband died, and she had to start um, teaching. And I was her first student, so I went to art class every single every single week of my life until I graduated from high school. I was her first student. Sometimes I was her only student, but uh, her name was Lois Bryce. She was just an incredible person. But um, so now I feel like, you know how every now and then, I'm gonna tell you something really embarrassing. Maybe, maybe I'll let you keep it in there, maybe I won't, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> but you know how when you, you see like uh, people competing, like in the Olympics, whatever, and you, and people they're interviewed and they people say you know oh you know are you nervous and they say no you know I've been you know I've been working for this all my life since I was little and then when the time comes you just have to do it so sometimes when I'm really miserable like doing fashion week or I'm just in agony I have this horrible job I'm exhausted you know I haven't slept in days or everything hurts and I'm it's too hard the job I'll say been training for this all your life. You just have to do it. Now's the time. Awesome. But that way, I that I pu literally pump myself up, that's awesome. and then I just do it. That's awesome. I know it's it's kind of pathetic, but oh, come on, that's awesome. No, you know that's what I mean. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, oh, okay. What about talking about my drop? Okay, so all right, so six by eight. Although if, uh, you could still shoot off if you do an eight what by eight, you just shoot off on one side. What about an eight yeah, by I like eight? I like that better. I haven't done many squares. I, I like the idea of a square. Of a, I like me too. I like a square. I like a square. Um, so then you could still shoot off, but you'd probably just shoot off one side if you were gonna. Yeah. So eight by eight, and then uh, so we've got natural edges, and then tell me the texture. Do you like that super organic? Feeling? I don't know. You know what I l found? I like. I don't like the water droplets as much as like streaks. Does that make sense? Didn't you tell me that last time? Yeah. So something? you you want it to feel? You don't want to see the any speckles. I don't love the speckles All as right, much. So. As, like if it's streakier yeah. somehow. All right. So you. I think you. What you want is like an organic. A where the. It, it's just. Uh, Organic texture. Um, how much texture? Like a lot? I mean, I, no. Subtle. I don't think I need a ton. Yeah. Uh, mm. And a vignette? Yeah, uh, I love the vignette. Yeah, I like the vignette. And are you thinking a warm gray? No. Are you thinking I don't wanna, neutral? I was thinking Remember I did a drop? Oh, I know what happened. I did your drop, and it you read it, red ran, blue. It, it read blue. blue. It read because, yeah, and I, I, had, like I put brown, I put raw lumber in yeah. that. Now I remember that was because that, for some reason, when you paint a front paint, even if you put a lot of brown, it, it, unless this you get is, enough I mean, warmth in there. This is just kind of the streakiness and like the. I just found that. Oh, so you like? But you, I don't know you, if I want all that like yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. But I like. I think I want something like that because oh, I so think I want I want it more, light because I want to let it go darker and see what it does. Yeah, so texture like 638 but not without separations. I wonder if we should put actual texture in like this drop that's happening oh, here. I love that. That's cool. Uh, like with, uh, it could be subtle. <coughs> like subtle Jack Sand. Is this, this one's 639. Where's 638? <coughs> Sorry. My allergies are killing me. How come this won't go um, back? Oh, here it is. Let me show you a little drop. I'll show you a drop that's not not what we're talking about because it's uh but it's it has a nice texture <coughs> 639 was the one you put 638 i don't know what 638 uh it's just it that drop has a lot of 
Oh, it is. 638 has a lot. Yeah, I see it. All right, so this is a neutral. If you wanted a neutral organic uh, fairly dark. This is also a back paint. But this is what you don't want. No, right. What is so, that? That's attractive. Yeah, that's similar. That's similar to the. Yeah, like your your warm my other one. One's warmer, yeah. Yeah. I so not that. this. No. Although this this would shoot, this would shoot pretty. I mean, it would, it would shoot nicely. But it's and it's got a lot of. Uh, contrast, which is nice. But so I, yeah. I know. So basically. I think you want something more like I don't this. Know, is that, this is hard to read because it's black. No, I like I like the, that when I saw it, I liked it. Yeah, it's because a, it's not, I don't like the... You, yeah, but the, you can't. I can't really. But how do you do it light, like, oh, like with can, a lighter oh, tone? I can do anything. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's really beautiful. We can do beautiful... Uh, I try to keep this from getting rivery. You just do, uh, you want to be like white and cream? I don't know. I don't know if I want it that, like, that would. Wheat color? That's to, what colors are those? It's actually, that's a color, like, it's actually a little bit of green in there, like old, cop, uh, bra, bra, you know, a, a bronzy kind of Yeah, it of looks like gray. a beat up side of a barn it, or something. Yeah, exactly. You know? That was what I was copying. It was some texture of an, uh, on a metal door in Haiti was my reference. Really? And, uh, but you could just find any, you could just look through, just find a texture you like too. Um, but that color has. I just know I want something lighter because I've been. But are you shooting. thinking cool? Mm. When you say lighter, do you mean? I mean lighter tone, like on a. Do you mean what a, the scale of one to ten would be like? What's white? One. A, are you so black you're talking about a two, three, four? Yeah. All right, let me just write that. Yeah. Just because I know if I drop light off of it, I can gar darken. It's going to be beautiful. So two, three, four in value, and a like different color. It's different color, light grays, cool, warm, and I then. I kind of like the green and the yellow and then, in yeah, this they, one, though. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that, this, that, that, that yellow color is a gorgeous color. It's, got, it's called Azo Gold. It's a beautiful color. It, uh, it's quinacridone Azo Gold. I, I love it. It's, a, it's, it's this acidic yellow, sort of like a factory yellow, something yeah, that you would cool. see mixed with rust. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, cool, warm. This that weird green color, which is not really green, but it's a it's a great color. Um, like in there, I love that. Yeah, I like that. So too, it should yeah. feel. You want it to feel. Uh, like a, a beautiful uh, grunginess. Yeah. Exactly. That was perfect. A beautiful grunginess, guys. That's what we're going for. Beautiful and grungy. And do you want any direction to your... So if this is our drop, do you want a slight... Especially when you're using uh, subtle texture, do you want a, a, a touch of direction like like this so that like my... vertical? Vertical, which then you could use it horizontally too because it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a square. square. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so that might be nice, a, like subtle direction. That I think those are beautiful. Yeah, I think. Sometimes having not 
two distinct. Uh, is that that color palette kind of? Yeah, that's a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit more saturated green than uh -huh. that, and with it's and then uh -huh. the, what I think you want. That's yeah. that's too a, a little too apple. Yeah. But if you yeah. in, no, the, I was in the center there, through. yeah. Because you could go almost go into some of those bone colors that are uh, like bone gray colors, so that they're uh, it's it's elegant at the same time as it's like sort that. of factory ish. That would be awesome. And then sometimes That's if you just I'm give going. me, uh, if I have yeah. all this, if I just have, if I just have a general rule, like my value, some descriptive colors, it's, I can, I can be freer when I do it. And um, it doesn't get so tight that the hardest part for me is when someone wants something exactly and they want it exactly like, you know, I'm trying to copy my monitor because that's yeah. where they've seen it. And yeah. that's, it, I could get, lose a little bit of freedom that way. And sometimes that loss of freedom, I don't, I think it doesn't always equate to the prettiest backdrops. Yeah. I think the thing, the only thing that I, that I, I don't know, is the, what is, what did you say, speckles? Yeah, no, you don't speckles. want those. I know I what you want, I know yeah, what you don't, I don't want now. I didn't like this. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a. You don't want it to look cloudy to, and. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, no, yeah. No, I think we want to, we want to make it feel. That'd be like, cool. Yeah, if you'd made it, gave it some stuff, mm -hmm. or whatever that is, that'd be awesome. Okay, cool. Okay, well, now we, we got it. We got eight it. by eight, I'll do it. Uh, Here are the notes, people couple of uh, like two weeks are you wait are you go sure. are you going somewhere I'm going to Europe for how long for till August 1st okay so when you come back so, I'll yeah. have it yeah and you can bring the girls by yeah that's what that'll be yeah. great let's do that so back to your roots at what point oh. did you start oh so what happened is you yeah. know I came I went to got my BA in painting like you know whatever and um Hey Teresa, yeah, this is, this is this yeah. Is All right, uh, Teresa, can you work for that week? File? Can you work at the week after your show yeah, for part of it? They said when I'm bartending, I'll have to leave at like four. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah, I can do the work. Okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, I came to I then from after I got my BA, I went to uh, graduate school in the theater. I just didn't want to finish school because I didn't have to get a job. I was like terrified and um, so I went to graduate school in the theater and that's I, I, I strongly recommend even if you're never going to work in the theater I think it's an amazing field to work in because you you learn how to collaborate because that's all theater is is one mm -hmm. giant collaboration and um, I learned everything I needed to know about working in art in the theater so so I learned to work large, and because I have my little special talent, I can copy, and I can copy from any scale to any scale. I'm sure it's like some kind of brain damage, some tilted or something, but uh, seriously, it's probably bad. But um, so I came to New York with uh, my professor, my boyfriend, and um, who had been my professor, but that was back in the day, you know, These when happen. you had to do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And he was a set designer, and I was practically starving to death. You know, working as a scenic artist in the city off off Broadway, it was like, fuck. You know, working in a as an office temp, I couldn't type because my mother said I couldn't take typing when everybody took typing in the eighth grade or whenever it was because I wasn't going to be a secretary. And that was so. If you work to be a secretary. You didn't take typing. Now it's pathetic. My children take videos of me typing because I literally type with two fingers. Yeah. They, you know, it's 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 tragic. Uh, but so I didn't know how to type. So all I could do is five dollars an hour working as an office temp, and I had this like epiphany one one New Year's. I was going to I was going to figure out some way to make money, even if I had to paint on black velvet. I was going to figure that out, and. Um, Literally, the, the next day, some I met a uh, model maker back. Do you remember model makers? You probably don't even know them because it was after, before your time. Everything oh, had no. to, there wasn't there wasn't anything made. We didn't have Photoshop. There wasn't right. 
you know, everything, ice cubes, any little set had to, it had to be small, you know, you, you had to make it. So some model maker introduced me to a photographer, his name was Michelle Trevkoff. He was a, uh, do you know Pete Turner? Do you know Pete Turner? No. How could you not know no. Pete Turner? Who's Pete Turner? Pete Turner, he's, uh, I think he's still alive. Um, he was, uh, he's Pete still Turner. alive. And, um, what's my password? see him? A photographer, yeah. Yeah, and anyway, uh, Michelle had worked for Pete Turner, and he did uh, still life stuff and sort of surrealistic, mm -hmm. and once again, it's before Photoshop, so you want to, oh, wow. yeah. you want to put a, yeah, if you look up, so that's Pete. Wow. Now look up Michelle Cherefkov, it's T-C-H, his is a little more gimmicky, but he used to work for Pete. Um, and he's a he's this French guy, and he you know he would do like the the yeah, diamond T -C -H. ring uh, T C H uh, Michelle T C H E Trev V E K O F K O F yeah 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 oh wow yeah so good where's his old work what. Okay, yeah, this was his classic, yeah, so stuff like this. I would paint, like, the background, the sky. Oh, keep like going. that? Yeah, so where's his old work? This is all his new stuff. I don't know. Oh, yeah, like that. That's my sky, I Whoops. think. Yeah. So that's, I painted oh, that. Oh, wow. So, uh, so you, he would have, like, a bed of tulips with the ring or whatever he was shooting, and then I would paint the sky behind it. Mm -hmm. And um, so... Uh, you, uh, Can you see it? and they were pretty small. Like I think some I did were like ten by ten feet, but I even I could show you in the first very first backdrop I ever painted. Uh, but I met him, and he asked me if I could paint with a you know spray gun. I said, of course. I didn't know what an airbrush spray gun was, and because um, you know, you have to when yeah. you're young, right? Yeah. You have to agree that you could do anything. Yeah. Because you've got nothing to lose. I have everything to lose now, but I had nothing to lose then. And so he said, oh, can you paint a sky with an airbrush? Of course. I, took, I think I took my little theater portfolio to meet him. And um, I, uh, so I bought, went to Pearl Paint, bought an airbrush, um, bought a piece of masonite, propped it up against my refrigerator on 9th Street and Avenue A, and um, painted the sky. And uh, it wasn't quite right. And the whole time I'm taking it in the taxi over to show him, I'm thinking, oh, dear God, did you? I was up all night. You know, I was exhausted. And I thought, you know, I just didn't try hard enough. I should, you know, this could have been my, my chance because that's what you've got, right? Even if you've got talent, you, talent doesn't mean shit. You've got to have, like, that little bit of luck, mm -hmm. you know? And I thought, was this my luck and did I blow it? And fortunately, he said, oh, it's not quite right. It's not really quite realistic enough but I don't really need it till tomorrow. So I remember being so happy. So I went back, basically just started from scratch and it was, it was perfect. And then just did one after the other for him. Mostly realistic skies, things wow. like that. All different kind of skies. And uh, then I started working for a few other people and then this one asshole from New Jersey, this, uh, he was this art director. He was such a jerk, oh my God. But he really helped me in the end because he, I had to paint a job for somebody where it was, do you know that famous shot, uh, I think it says Victory in Europe Day and there's the nurse kissing the sailor in Times mm -hmm. Square, the yeah. famous picture. Yeah. They were recreating that shot and I had to paint Times Square. Right. It's pretty, you know, that's pretty detailed, you know, all those little buildings. And uh, I worked on that for like four days straight, just. Per, it was great and it was fine. He took it uh, and the art director said to me as I was leaving, you know, he said, listen, you know, this is mine now. I'm putting this in my country house because I paid for it. I bought it and that was our agreement. But you don't have to give the background to the photographer. You paint it for them. They use it and then you get it back. They're buying the use of it. Even if you paint it exactly for them, they're just buying the use of it. And it was like, what? 
And uh, I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot. So I started saying, okay, I'll paint this exactly for you, but this too, it's a different price if you want to buy it. And I'd make, you know, back then it wasn't that much money, but I'd make it a little bit more. And generally they didn't even want it. They just wanted it for that shot. Right. So then I started getting backdrops back and building stock. Once I wow. built stock, then I could afford a bigger, you What know, year was this? 78, maybe? Wow. Were you born? 70, I was born mm -hmm. in 70. Were you born? No. 88. No. <laughs> You're born in 88? Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. So, um, and then from the the scenic to like the more model. Oh yeah, it was like basically there were a couple of people who wanted an Irving Penn type background mm -hmm. because Irving Penn. He painted his own. Didn't uh, he? he did. He painted his own, and they were really rough. If you saw them, they're not. They're talk about organic. Are they still around? There's one in his show right now. There up is? at yeah, oh, at, that you can see it. up at the mat. Yeah. Um, they're really organic. I mean, I think they would just throw coffee on them. They would do. I think somebody would paint them. That, but he, what he did that was so interesting, because he did all his own developing. He would, he would dodge and burn when he was developing, so that even if it was the same backdrop, like you can have a couple of his books that, like one of these pictures he shot in Paris and. He used the same backdrop for every one, but in every picture it looks different because he manipulated it in right. when he was developing. Right. And uh, so I would people ask for some Irving Penn type things. And we even used to call our model drops Irving Pens to start with. Now I quit doing that because that, uh, you know, I just don't think that was the right way to go. But uh, and then I copied other people. You know, uh, this guy Lord Snowden. The, who was married to Princess Margaret from a photographer in London, you know, Princess mm -hmm. Queen Elizabeth's sister. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he was a photographer. Um, he was using he was using backdrops. And I didn't copy, copy him, but I realized you could do these. And the model drops, they've really uh, definitely, over time, I've learned how to do them better. Although some of the early model drops, one, one thing I do like that's fun for me is uh, taking a drop that's 30, 35 years old uh, and shifting it a little, you know, doing another layer on it or something. Hey, hey Jimmy. And it's 30 years old? Yeah, I often do this. I take a drop that we paint. They're drops, I know I could, I, they're drops, the first 100 drops were not necessarily, we just, at one point I just had to number them, but they weren't necessarily in exact order. but. But I always know, depending on what number it is, roughly how old it is. Like number 500, uh, I painted the week I came back from India when we adopted Moon Moon, our, wow. my, our, yeah. my oldest daughter, who's 30. Wow. So that was the first drop I painted when I came back. So that was number 500. Wow. So if it's before number 500, it's over 30 years old. Wow. So sometimes I'll take a, a drop that's, I don't know, kind of cheesy looking, kind of 80s looking or 70s looking, I don't know, something. And I'll, it's, you still have the same backdrop, but I'll like add another layer or something. It's just very exciting. You know, you feel like you're something, feels sort of like a tree, you know. You know how you look at a beautiful tree and you think, God, that tree is going to be around so long after I'm gone. It was here so long before I was gone. I love that mm -hmm. idea of like cool. this backdrop, you know, maybe it'll be here long after I've gone. I mean, sometimes they get destroyed. People fold them and they, but some people like them all fucked up looking too. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You saw Leibowitz's drops. Her, some of her drops are a mess and she, she likes them that way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, mean. I, I kind of like that sense of, of that age where it's not, not perfect, you know? Yeah. But who's the photographer that you've done the most drops for? Would it be any? Probably the most. No, I've done lots of drops for lots of different people. But uh, Annie's been probably in some ways the most significant because uh, she is Annie Leibovitz. And uh, also I've done, f for me, fairly innovative things for her because she is very, uh, you know, she's very particular, she knows what she wants, but she's also very generous with the boundaries of creativity that she gives you. You know, she'll yeah. roughly tell me she wants something and or have one of her assistants tell me and 
I'll just go for it. I've done crazy things for her. Like literally all I've done is like throw buckets of water and then throw buckets of paint and let it sit and then do things that I can be, can be very free with her, which I, is, I found to be the most successful backdrops. She does not give me a lot of parameters, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes it's too dark or too light. I have to rework it. I have to come back. It doesn't have enough texture. That's normal. I don't, I, when I paint a drop for someone, I don't have any problem with adjusting it. Because the truth is, even if you come look at it, it's you, not gonna shoot you're the looking same at way. it in yeah. our studio under yeah. fluorescent light and, you know, yeah. you know, crazy light from the windows. So you don't know what it's going to look like. Like We didn't think your drop was going to shoot blue. And right. it, you, you took that drop. You wanted a warm, neutral gray. I painted it for you, and you sent me a picture, and you said, my drop's shooting light blue. It was shooting light blue. Yeah. That was shocking to me. That's why then yeah. we painted the back. Yeah, yeah. But. Yeah. All right, well, this has been amazing. I, I can't believe I get to sit with her and talk, talk shop That's here. Ridiculous. This is just really cool just to be, you know, I, I know so many people um, have it on their, their wish list, one of your drops. So. W and I wish they could have one because I want, I love that idea of, of young photographers or old photographers. I like the idea of people who are just doing it. Yeah. I find it really inspirational. Yeah. Although I don't like the pressure. I don't like the pressure of feeling like I might fail them that's a lot of pressure no you, you gotta know. stop that everybody loves what you do and it's so special and it really helps make well, our I'm, work I shine can, i can do the one thing i can i can promise anyone is that i will try as hard as i can for them and if it's not right i'll take it back and fix it because that's really important i don't want people to feel like i'm talking them into something that i don't right. like at all right uh because it might not be right because yeah. i can't know for sure um but well with that I'm just psyched to be here. Thanks for talking to us You're this welcome. afternoon. It's been real. It's awesome. All right. Thank you, Peter. Cool. Thank you. How cool was that? Is that amazing? Is she amazing? I was right, right? Of course I was right. And I can't believe we have this type of artist helping us with our careers. I mean, and doing the best work out there and making our pictures look better. So definitely go to olafontstudio.com and check it out. And hopefully you can have a backdrop uh, that's signed by Sarah Oliphant in your studio very soon.